Alright, so my tri fuel kit finally arrived in the mail the other day, and uh, it took a month for me to get it from the time that I actually placed the order on the internet to the time it actually arrived at my front door. So, guys, you might want to keep that in mind. Uh, this is not going to be a fast process at all. So, let's see what's in the box here. Alright, we got a nice little uh, booklet for instructions. Got our parts right here. And uh, it looks like the, the regulator. Alright, let's see what's in the bag here. The instructions actually kind of give you a diagram of what everything is. So let's see, so this is the engine regulator with primer, and this is your primer button here. Let's see, B is this here, which is going to be your load block and bushing fuel outlet fitting. And it looks like this goes right here. And it does. Alright, C, we got two hose clamps. Fuel hose, which is this right here. That runs from the regulator to the carburetor. Let's see, E is going to be adapter with fuel inlet fitting. So this is the adapter and it's got the fuel inlet fitting already on it, which is kind of nice. It's got to put stuff on the threads. F is my gasket, that should be this right here, and it is. G is our uh, stud extenders, and that are these. These are the stud extenders right here. Teflon thread sealant is going to be this stuff. Wire ties, maybe these. Lower mounting bolts, I'm assuming are like these. Yes, these are the lower mounting bolts. Um, mounting bolt washer and nuts for mounting lugs. That's probably these right here. round frame caps that's these right here if I have to cut the frame we'll see hopefully I won't but if I do we've got the caps uh, safety sticker oh that's really important right there crankcase extender tube once again that's not located on the um, on the picture either so it's going to be either that or this is probably this. This is probably the extender tube, and uh, this is probably probably the spacer right here. All right, so there we go. There's our parts, and uh, now all we need is the generator, which is sitting out there, and I guess we'll get started. All right, so let's put this thing together. The first thing I need to do is install the adapter which is this piece here and uh, the first thing I really need to do is put some thread sealer on this piece here and screw that back into the adapter like so All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this hose barb on there too. All right, that looks 
pretty good. All right, I'm going to tighten this down a little bit. It's a uh, nine sixteenths. All right, that's going to do it right there. All right, that's taken care of. All right, the next thing I need to do: move this air cleaner. So that we can actually get to the carburetor. Millimeter to remove this bolt down here. Alright, the next thing I need to do is put these stud extenders on. This is the front right here, the outer ring. Next, we put our gasket. We put the air box back on. Install that. It slides in here. And put want to over tighten anything just tighten it up until it's snug all right so I'm going to cut it right here All right, so I went ahead and uh, poked the hose through the uh, air cleaner right here, and I put those two little plastic ties on there to hold that spacer in place. Now it's time to put the regulator, or attach the regulator to the generator. Um, and I've chosen to attach it up here, like so. So, here we go. I want to make sure that the hose is able to get up here without binding. And then also I want to make sure 
that the primer button in the back um, is free to move in and out. Take my punch and mark it. So now I need to drill two holes with a quarter inch drill bit. So I've got my quarter inch out here. batteries on my cameras died so I had to go put new batteries and everything but I'm ready alright so now I'm gonna mount this onto the generator and uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take these uh, bolts right here put the bolt through I'm gonna have a washer and that's gonna go up against the generator and then we'll push it through and stick our lock washer on the back and then our nut on the back like that. So now we'll put our nuts on. Put the hose bar into this T. It's going to give me your 9 16th wrench to do this. Oops. Fine. Alright, the next thing I need to do is cut this hose to length. It's going to look like that. Alright, so when you're cutting the hose, you want to make it as, as short as possible, but you also need to give it some room. Make sure that when the engine is running, that there's enough room for it to flex around and not come off. Alright, next we're going to put it on the hose bar. And then we'll slide our hose clamp up here. Now I'll do the same down here. Looks pretty good. Alright, looks like the last thing I need to do is just put uh, this back in here. The last thing I need to do is put a couple brass fittings on the regulator so that it'll accept the hose I'm using and here are the fittings right here. Uh, this is a three quarter inch to half inch, and then we've got our half inch to three quarter, I mean half inch to three eighths. So um, when you go and buy these parts, make sure that you get the, um, the iron pipe threads because most stuff at uh, the hardware store that's in three quarter inch is um, stuff for your garden hose, and those threads are going to be different. Than, these, than the threads on this regulator. So, um, first thing I need to do, put some threads sealant on here. And then uh, I'll do the same for my half inch to three eighths hose barb. All right, there we go. So the hose will go on here. And, uh, and then the other side of the hose will go on my uh, natural gas outlet that's in my laundry room. If you want to see that video, uh, check out my YouTube channel and uh, you can see that there. Here are the tools that I needed to complete this project. I needed a pair of hedge trimmers and a razor blade for cutting the hoses. 
uh, you don't really need hedge trimmers to cut the hose. I just had them handy and I thought it was a good idea. Um, pipe wrench to tighten some of the fittings. You probably don't need this either. A pair of pliers would work just fine. Um, some sort of drill with a half inch bit to drill the holes for the mounting of the regulator. You're going to need a 9 16 and a 7 16 inch wrench and um, the same size sockets would be uh, nice to have. Uh, I also used a ratchet for convenience. Um, I needed the extender for to take off the air cleaner. Uh, also, uh, the 7 16 inch uh, nut driver came in handy too. Now, the kit is in standard, and of course my generator is in metric. So, um, for my generator parts, I needed, uh, like this is a 10 millimeter, or a 12 millimeter, and a 10 millimeter. And for the uh, U.S. carburation kit, I needed a 9 16 and a 7 16 So, uh, you can probably get away with just using standard or just using metric, but, you know, that's not going to fit perfectly. Um... Three different size screwdrivers. You know, you, you you don't have to have this little short stubby one. You can get away with that. And uh, I just use this one to poke the hose back into the the hair the air breather. So you probably wouldn't need this either. Uh, hammer and punch to um, to get the the holes into the frame of the generator. A pair of pliers for tightening things, and then also pair of scissors for getting the stuff out of the bags. I hope this gives you guys an idea of the tools that are required to put together the tri-fuel kit from U.S. Carburation. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed.